Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Retro Collectors. And as a Dreamcast collector, there's always been one peripheral that I've wanted the most, and that's the Dreamcast arcade stick. Now the prices range on eBay from about $120 to $150 Canadian. Now it may not seem like much for some, but I'm kind of a little bit hesitant on buying something that big on eBay and shelling out that kind of money over on eBay. The pricing and the shipping alone is ridiculously added on. So I instead bought a Mayflash F300 arcade stick that I wanna use with the Sega Dreamcast. But I don't only want it to look like this. I wanna do a little bit of a modification that really showcases what I do enjoy in the Sega Dreamcast. And that modification is Sanwa buttons and a Sanwa stick. Sanwa parts are some of the best arcade parts that you can add to a customizable arcade stick. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the arcade stick and the buttons and add some vinyl wrapping to the arcade stick so to save time, I already took off the screws off the back to make this a little bit easier. And I removed all but one of the hookups to the buttons. By doing this makes it a little bit easier in showcasing how I did it. I also labeled all the buttons as to what they do. So to change them or to remove them is very simple. You just pull back the plastic sleeve and with maybe some pliers or you could do with loose hands since these are pretty much loose already. You just grab and pull and grab and pull. This is pretty straightforward. And each button has a little tab on either side of it to help drop it. So I'm gonna remove all of them now to make this a little bit easier. Once you have it all out, it should look something similar to this. Pretty straightforward. You could even change the start and options button, but I didn't buy it because it's a different measurement to the regular buttons. This is, I think, a 24 millimeter button where these are at 30, I believe. To change the ball top, it's pretty simple. You just put a screwdriver in here and you twist from the front. I already have it a little bit loose, so it should be no issue. So the sleeve, the dust cover, all come off pretty simple. Now to take off the actual fight stick, it's pretty simple. It's just four screws and it just lifts right back out. Now, the Sanwa makes a nicer sound, cleaner sound. It has the four-way gate on the actual May flash. I changed it to the eight-way gate. I don't know if you guys can see the difference. It's four-way. It does do the eight directions. It's just we're more used to the eight-way when we're doing our, like a Street Fighter combo. The people typically slide the, the analog stick or the stick along the top or the bottom of the gate. So it hits one side, hits another side, hits the side. So if you're doing a fireball, we typically do this. We grind it along the gate. The Japanese do the opposite. When they do a fight combo, they do the fireball in succession. So they don't let it hit the sides. They don't let it grind along the sides. They, they do that. And when you're playing it, you actually feel the difference between an eight-way and a four-way gate. When you get the Sanwa stick, it doesn't just connect directly to the Mayflash motherboard. You need a five-pin connector that connects right to the Mayflash and to an available slot in the motherboard, which is down here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's a pretty simple modification. Slides in, the tabs go up tabs there they point up so now with the arcade stick actually detached you have to detach each one of these cables here each one represents an up down left right direction of the actual stick so what you do is you follow the wire to its corresponding direction so now with the may flash removed you just drop it in now you have to make sure that the plastic tabs point up and to the left so it goes straight in and it fits perfectly. This side here will go into, it's a multi-purpose side that you have right here. It's a five pin connector on that side. And it's fairly simple to return right back in. So we're gonna put the screws back in. And there's no wrong way of putting this in. It fits exactly the way it's manufactured. Now the five pin goes only one way. Again, with the plastic tabs, See those plastic tabs? They face forward. 
so away from you not front in front of you and they just slide right in now to do the mod on the front i can't put the buttons in just yet because i have something planned for that so this is the fight stick now with the sanwa bit in so my wife has a cricket and she cut out this i copied it from a template that was online it's just a basic gray and we put some vinyl decal as the buttons laid out there and there's a start button there but it's pretty straightforward replacement some areas i'm probably gonna have to adjust with maybe a razor blade now i ordered six buttons from amazon they came really fast and they're pretty universal again sanwa buttons pretty straightforward just basically matching the buttons to the corresponding uh, wires. So it's a simple drop-in thing. Basically just like that, push it in, there we go. Each one just drops in easily. I just find if you're pushing, if you're putting it in, put them always up and down, that there's little plastic tabs there. Put them up and down rather than left and right. It's a little bit harder to get into the sides of it. If you're pushing up and down, it's a little bit easier. You just drop right in like that so I should have bought eight but I only bought six and the reason why is because these two here are my LB right and LT you don't really use these too much in fighting games you typically only use these these are usually like macro buttons where you could assign something to a two button press so like if you're doing a uh, EX fireball you could assign it to there I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna do like an EX fireball either way like that but if I wanted to, you can macro, macro into that. So I'm gonna put those original buttons back in for that. Again, facing them up and down. These are not Sanwa, these are I think just Mayflash buttons. They just drop in actually a lot easier, a lot tighter. And that's it. So that's what it's gonna look like. Next is to put the ball top back on. It's pretty straightforward. You just screw it on and tighten it from the back from this screw here. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna flip this over and showcase the wires and put those back together. So the wires, are, like I said, I already marked them. So it's X with X, Y with Y, L with L, R with R, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna cut away, I already put one on. So Y is right here. There's no right or wrong way to put them on. You just basically slide the sleeve metal sleeve over the the prong push down and the same thing with the other one slide push down and there's a plastic sleeve over each pretty straightforward so I'm gonna cut away and do the rest of them and we're gonna test this out afterwards so now they're all plugged in and we're gonna test it over onto the TV on the Xbox 360 with some Street Fighter Now that it's been all tested out, let's put the actual back plate back on. There's no right or wrong way of putting this back on. It just slides back in. You have to push down a little bit to actually sit it down properly. Right. So now I'm gonna wrap the controller with vinyl all the way around it and make it a little bit more custom like the way I want it. Go around with a razor blade to etch it a little bit better. And there you have it. A simple modification turned this into a Dreamcast Green Goblin. Not the best, but passable for me when I'm gonna be playing on the Dreamcast and maybe stream with it. Please let me know what you guys think. Did you guys enjoy this modification? It's pretty simple to do. You could do it yourself if you have a Mayflash F300. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.